If you love React Query, which is from TanStack, you're probably going to love the TanStack router, which is their replacement for, say, React Router. Now, I covered React Location, which was the previous version of it. Wow, I guess about a year ago. And whoa, it's gotten so much better. So there's a bunch of things that are awesome about it. There's type-safe routing. There's now file-based routing. It supports server-side rendering and streaming. There is a, a fantastic support for search parameters that makes it a whole lot easier. You're going to see all of that in this video. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is the application that we're going to build. It is a movie displaying application. Of course, all of that code is available to you for free on GitHub in the link in the description right down below. Let's just real quick walk through the app to see what the different routes are. So right at the top here, you got the home page. You can click on the various pages here and you see the URL change with every page. You can click on and get into details for that particular movie. In this case, Napoleon is boring, whatever. I'm a Ridley Scott fan of still boring. And the search page, you can type in something like Dune as an example, and you get the details of the first search result right at the top there. And then you get the search results down below. And these are actually two different queries and they, they're streamed. So it's actually really, really, really cool. A couple of things. If I ever say TSR, that stands for TAN stack router. So that's one thing to know. And then the other thing is, in order to get all the data for this, you have to have an API key from the movie database, TMDB. They're free, so just go and get one, and then you can get all these cool looking movies. All right, let's go and take a look at our starter application. That is the bare bones of this application that we'll then go and add all these routes onto. So in that GitHub repo, there is a starter directory. I have copied that into the movies directory. That's what we're going to end up with. And let's go take a look after we've run dev on that and see what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. You've got your homepage route, which in this case just gives us hello. Let's go take a look at a little bit about the implementation of TSR or TANSEC router as we see it in this application. So you can understand a bit more about it right off the bat. So one thing to note is over in your package JSON, we've got the dev command that's going to start up the development mode, right? So you've got TSR watch and node server and then tailwind. Now node server is just running the server for this particular streaming server. The server is in server JS over here. Let's go back to package. The really important one in this case is TSR watch. And what that's doing is you got this new command TSR. It's brought in because of TanStack router. And TSR watch means it's going to be looking at the files in the directory that you configure in TSR config that has our routes, in this case, source routes, and any files in there that it finds match the pattern of a file-based route, it's then going to turn into a file-based route. So it's the thing that's actually doing the work of watching that directory. Then over in our source, we've got this route tree gen. So this is actually generated by that TSR application. This has all of your routes as well as all the typing in there. So that's how all this strong typing is done, both for the parameters of the route, the routes, the list of the routes themselves, as well as any search parameters, which are also strongly typed. So super cool. Okay, now let's go over into our home page and see what that looks like. So I'll go to routes index, and that's going to be our home route. So now, unlike other file-based routers, you don't export the component. In this case, you export the file route. So you bring in file route from React Router, you create it, you tell it what route it's going to be on, and then you do this .create route and you give it some options. In this case, one of those options is the component that you want to render when you hit that. And so in this case, that is div hello. We're running a couple other things as well. Zod, you use that to go and uh, manage your search parameters and type those. And of course, link, and that was what we're going to use when we add links to the page. So let's start with implementing that paging. Those three little selectors there where you go from first page, second page, third page. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here in a create route. And what validate search does is it validates the search parameters from the URL. So this is where you get your strong typing around the URL search parameters. That the search parameters are anything after the question mark. So in this case, it would be question mark page equals. And then we're saying using Zod, 
it's got to be a number. And if you don't find it, then the catch-all value is one. So the default value is one. All right, so let's say that we get pages. And we'll just start that off at three pages. And then we'll get the current page that we're looking at. To do that, we do route.useSearch, and we get the search parameters for that route. Now, route is defined locally, so that's how you get that route. We can add on just for example, page. Go back over here, and I'll say page equals three. And now, there you go, page equals three. Cool, right? Let's actually go and add some UI to make all that happen with the actual buttons on there. So what this code is doing is creating a new array that has three elements in it, all zero, and then just using map to go through each one of those elements. It's going to get I in this case, which would be the page. And then we'll say, in this loop, are we looking at the current page? If we are, then we'll just go and render a static element. But if we aren't looking at the current page, then we render a link. And so that link comes from Tansac router. You give it where it's coming from, in this case, the route ID, and then also any search parameters you want to put on there. And that would be the current page that we're looking at, so I plus one. Now let's go take a look and see if that actually works. And yes, it does. How cool is that? You can see the URL changing, and you can also see the content changing. So cool. Now, now if you're wondering where this whole movie's header comes from, well, that's over in root. This is going to be your layout component, effectively. And in there, I've got a header, and that header has a link to the slash page, which would be our home page. Now, there are actually these really cool extensions to link active props and active options. Those are properties, in this case, like class name, that are applied when we're actually looking at the active link. So in this case, if you're on the home page, then those active props are applied. And in this case, it also gives the options to say, well, don't worry about the search parameters on that. Just look at the base URL. So include search is false. And now, yeah, because we're on the slash route, we have that link as active and it applies those active props in this case the class name would you get font bold all right now let's go back to our page and in here we're going to want to show some movies right so let's go and bring in those movies to do that i'm going to bring in a function called fetch movies now it's going to actually hit the local host to go get that list of movies now how does that work well over in server i've added a couple of endpoints on here in this case api movies and you give it the page and then it's the one that actually goes out to the movie database and goes and gets the list of popular films. So you're going to have to go and define this TMDB API key with whatever TMDB API key you've got and put that into the environment. There's also two other ones. There's movie ID, gives you the details for a movie, and then of course the search route, so API search. So we're going to just call this initial one API movies and give it the page. Now we need to call that, so we add on to create route a loader definition. And that loader definition says, take whatever the page is from the depths, we'll get there in a second, and then call fetch movies with that page. So the loader depths, or I'm guessing dependencies, is another function that takes the search parameters or the page parameters and turns them into an object that then gets sent to that loader. To go and get access to that loader data, we just go into our component, and we do route.useLoaderData. Now, pages actually comes in as part of this. So we're just going to get movies and pages. And we'll just do JSON stringify on those movies. And there you go. There are our movies. Awesome. Coming in as JSON. But of course, we don't want to actually look at it that way. So let's make it all pretty. Let's go get some movie cards and then iterate over them and make it look pretty. So we're going to bring in movie cards. That's over in the components directory. Movie cards is just a standard good old React component. It does bring in link from the React router. Interesting that right now it's telling us we don't have that route. That's part of the strong typing that we get with React router. We don't have that route, so that link is currently invalidated. Really cool. So with those movie cards, it basically takes an array, and then it does the formatting of the array of movies into nice little cards. Let's replace our stringify with that. And then let's go and check it out. Oh, look at that. Nice. So first off, let's go remove this page. Don't need that anymore. But let's go fix this issue in movie cards where we don't have this route. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to define that route. So to create that route, I'm going to create a new folder called movies. And then inside of there, $movie ID 
.tsx. Now, that's how you do parameters in this particular file-based router. Other file-based routers do things like doing the brackets. This one does that dollar movie ID. I actually think it's pretty cool because if you look over here in the movie cards, that link, which is now valid, by the way, because it picked up that file-based route, matches that same syntax. So you've got that dollar movie ID in there, and I think that's really nice. All right, so we'll start off with something simple. We'll just say movie, and we'll give it the file route with that name. Let's go check it out, see if it works. There we go, movie, nice. Okay, so now we gotta go fetch the detail for that. So let's go bring in fetch movie. This is again gonna call localhost with API movie, and then give it the ID. Now in this case, because it's a parameter, all I need to do is give it a loader, and then loader gets parameters, in this case movie ID, and we get our fetch movie ID. Again, some cool strong typing in here. The params are strongly typed, so if I remove movie ID, and then I hit hint, essentially, then I get movie ID because it knows that movie ID is part of that whole route. If I go back over here to the route tree gen, you can see that we get our movie ID route, it's got the path, it knows everything about it, so it's really, really nice. All right, our movie detail rendering component is movie, so we'll bring that in. And then down here, we'll get our movie data from our loader data, and then we'll render our movie. Let's take a look. All right, looking really good. Let's go back to the home page, click around. Nice, beautiful, really nice, and fast too. Check that out. All right, so let's go finish up our example by going and implementing our search route. And we'll start by creating a search.tsx file in routes. And in there, we are going to define a new file route, in this case, slash search. We're gonna do the validate search a little bit differently. You don't have to use Zod if you don't want to. In this case, I'm just going and creating my own function. I give it the types coming in, in this case, Q string is gonna have the query as Q. And the output of that is going to be in this interface with Q also as a string, which is going to be defaulted to an empty string. And then the component is going to get that Q from route.useSearch. We're also gonna bring in use navigate. That's also from React Router. And navigate is a way that you can go and push the user to the specific route that you want. In this case, we're just gonna keep them going to this same route, but we are going to change the search string to whatever they've typed in. Nice, right? So what's it save? And then we'll go over here to search. And we've got our search bar, awesome. So Dune as an example, you hit return. And now you can see up in the URL, we've got Q equals Dune. So that's what happens when you hit navigate. And then you give it a key of search, you give it a function. That function gets the existing search parameters. And then you update that with whatever your search parameters are. In this case, we're just replacing Q with whatever the new query is. And we're just using a regular old React use state for that. So you might notice that we're not actually doing the search here. And we're going to do a different approach. We're going to put an outlet into this route. And that actually gives us the ability to kind of have nested routes. So outlet comes from Tanstack React Router. And in this case, our nested route inside of search is index. So we'll create a new route called search index. And then into there, we will define our new file route. In this case, it's slash search slash because it's the index route on search. And then we'll do our same validate search. And then at this point, we're just go, we just wanna get the actual query. So let's hit save, try this again. And now we can see that our interior index has been routed into that outlet. And now we've got our search parameter in there. So awesome, let's go and create a search for Dune. To do that, we'll bring in a simple function called fetch movies. It calls that API search localhost route, and we give it the query, and then it gives us like our movies. We'll do the loader depths thing to translate query out of search and into just the basic object, which we'll then pass to our loader, which is going to go fetch those movies and then return a object that has movies in it. We're also going to have that single one movie as well. So we'll get there in a second, but let's go down here and connect it to our actual component. So we'll get our movies from our loader data. Obviously Q is no longer defined. Let's now go and put some movie cards in there with our movies. Let's go bring in movies. Let's go bring in movie cards. 
We'll hit save and nice. Awesome. All right, this is looking good. To wrap up this particular page, we want to go and put a detail for the first movie returned at the top of the page. So let's go and bring in a function called fetch movie that calls the same movie ID endpoint that we did with the detail page. And then down in our loader, we're going to say that if we have a movie, then we will defer fetch movie on that ID. Now the defer is what's going to give us suspense loading. So let's just say, for example, this API endpoint for the details takes a little bit longer and we want to show the search results first. So that's what defer is allowing us to do. We can go and decide which parts of the page we want to stream independently. So let's bring in defer. And then we'll bring in first movie. And we need to handle deferred data a little bit differently. So in this case, we want to use an await component. That's also from the router. So we use React Suspense to provide a fallback until the await, in this case, which is this component from Tansac Router, completes on that first movie data. So now let's bring in movie as well. Awesome. And there you go. Now we've got our detail at the top and we've got our search results down below. But here, check this out. So let's actually make this a little bit slower. So we'll go back over into our server and we can really see it loading. So if I go to movie ID, it's happening instantaneously, but I can add a little wait in there and give ourselves say three seconds worth of delay. All right, let's try again, do Captain America again. And we can see now that we're getting that loading state, which is the fallback of React Suspense, until that three seconds times out, and boom, we get our data. Streaming, how cool is that? Now let's finish this off by adding search to our header. We'll go back into our root, and we'll add our link to search. Looks really nice. And now we got our search page, fantastic. All right, there you go, a fully built out movie finding application on Tansac Router. Check it out for yourself. Go over to GitHub, get yourself a TMDB API key, and then try it out and see how you like this new Tansac Router. And if you like it, leave a comment and say that it's really cool or not in the comments. I'd love to hear whatever you have to say about this particular router. I'm stoked about it. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. Go check it out in the comments. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.